All right. Can you hear me now, Mohammed? I hope so. Let me know. Uh, just to start again here. Uh, hey there, and welcome back to another video of measureschool.com, where we teach you the data-driven way of digital marketing. My name is Julian, and today we're doing a live stream for our 100K subscribers. Um, let me know if you can hear me and if you can see me. Now, uh, I wanted to tell this little story that just happened. And okay, people can hear me. <laughs> the funny thing that just happened was that I have this intro thing where I count down five minutes because more people are joining. And we had this all planned. We sent out the link, da 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 da, right? Um, by the way, if somebody from the team watches this, maybe you should put in the description the new link to the new video that we are seeing right now. Anyways, what happened while I was doing the countdown thing, there is music playing in the background. Now, this music I bought um, on a platform a long time ago, probably five, six years ago. And the countdown goes down five minutes. It's five minutes long. And then it's one minute and I'm getting ready to talk. And suddenly, black screen, YouTube has shut down your stream because of uh, copyright violation, probably because of the music. So there you go. Um, YouTube, <laughs> YouTube isn't as friendly. Maybe when we hit the 100,000 subscriber mark, we will um, be in a better standing with them. I don't know. Uh, let me see where we are right now. So the, the funny thing about um, the subscriber count is actually, so we are 20, we are 21 people <laughs> left from 100,000 subscribers. So if you haven't yet, then uh, hit that subscribe button uh, down below and um, hopefully that, that number will go up in a second. Anyways, uh, so what, are, what did I <laughs> talk about? This, this brought me uh, out of concept. Um, it's funny, when, when I started uh, YouTube, I never thought we could reach 100,000 subscribers with like the topics that I'm teaching. It has been a slow growth. I mean, some people hit this milestone within three or four months, right? Depending on um, what kind of type of videos you do. Um, there are people now that can hit one, two million subscribers within um, a year. And obviously that's, uh, that's some, that, that, that is still um, something that is rare, but 100,000 subscribers is a kind of a milestone for me. There is, um, there was the 10,000 subscriber milestone, which I was looking forward to because then you get access to the YouTube studios that are all over the world and you can go in and use their equipment. Um, then long time nothing happens. And now with 100,000 subscribers, I hopefully will get um, a, a somebody to talk to at YouTube. They have like these partner channels uh, that will help you out. And obviously if you reach the next milestone, which would be uh, 1 million subscribers, um, yeah, I don't know if, if you're gonna get there unless we take around the um, thing. Okay, somebody has unsubscribed. <laughs> so maybe um, not as fond of the channel, which is also an interesting to see. Um, yeah, what uh, is this live stream all about? We really just uh, planned this a few days ago because we calculated a little bit in our heads and like, hey, we're about to hit 100,000 subscribers on YouTube and that will be on Friday, Friday morning at some point. Like, okay, uh, what should we talk about? It's like, maybe you just do a live stream and hang out with people. So uh, this is what I'm planning on doing. Um, thank you for joining me and thank you for, for the people who have uh, found their way over to, to this video. <laughs> the other video is now copyright strike, I guess. This I think is my first copyright strike yeah, it's my first copyright strike. Uh, it's not a strike. It's probably not a strike. So uh, YouTube has this this thing with um, real strikes where you get, if you have three strikes, you will be um, demonetized and then you can only publish videos and um, not monetize them anymore through advertising. But uh, we are um, nowhere near that because I tend not to do very controversial topics, I guess. Uh, let me look quickly into the chat uh, who we have here. Oh, this is the old chat from the... So now I need to know the new chat. Let me see how I can... 
Okay, this is all on the fly right now because I haven't really looked into it too much beforehand. You can only prepare what is already online and then the stream went down. So here we should be able to put this in, I think. Here we go. All right, is this everything? Yeah, looks good, right? Okay, um, so earlier we had a comment from Bill. Um, now Mohammed is here, we have Gazi, we have Lars, hey Lars, we have um, D, whoever is that, and we have Michael, so, and Nandan. Um, great to have you uh, join us here for the live stream. And um, yeah, let me know uh, where you are currently watching this from. I'd be interested uh, since this is a kind of an odd time. And I uh, hope you all are safe. Um, as you might know, there's a situation going on outside or uh, everywhere in the world right now. Um, Germany itself, where I'm, I'm located right now, is affected and we are on pretty much lockdown. We can still go out, but uh, need to keep our social distance. And I have been pretty much uh, at home here in this, in this little studio that I have and doing a lot of different live streams, trainings and so on. So yesterday, for example, we did a data layer uh, training. Um, so my voice is a little bit rough um, I hope it's not the, the virus, but uh, I've been talking a lot on the phone lately. So if I cough one or two times, uh, you know, it's not because of the thing. All right. Um, who else we have here? We have somebody from Korea here. Hello from Korea. Uh, can't read your name, unfortunately. Can't read Korean. Francesco is here. Julian as well. Julian, um, I guess. Uh, with, with the accent. We have Anna here, Anna. Hey, Anna, great to see you again. And Dimitro, Dimitri again from Ukraine. I think I saw your, your name before on the, the live stream as well. And Mohammed from Yemen, wow. And D from, no, re RIP, okay. So it's great that you would join me uh, today. If you have any questions, we uh, will be answering them um, live. If there are any technical questions, maybe we can make it work today, but I haven't really prepared anything in terms of like demos or so. So this, this is not gonna be a training session. Uh, just looking for this little clock to tick up. Okay, we have one subscriber more <laughs> right now. I don't, I don't know if it, this, is gonna, um, this is gonna work in the next few, <laughs> next hour that I'm gonna be online, unfortunately. Uh, maybe you can tell some friends uh, that they should subscribe and then you can see this 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 number ticking up and uh, maybe we can make it within the hour that, that would be my goal um, but i won't be on here for uh, very long because we also have uh, to work we have umut here and he asked for a video that covers dynamic shopping track add to cart purchase and so on uh, the, these are longer tutorials, I must say, and we have them within our premium membership, uh, Measure Master. So if you want to check that out, you can. We don't have that on the channel itself, as it um, oftentimes takes more time to prepare. But at the same time, it's also something when I explain it in one video, there are a lot of questions because people don't have the background of the other stuff that I can explain within a course format. So um, just to explain my rationale behind this. We have Bill here um, and he's in Iceland. Wow, Iceland is also nice, but cold right now, probably. He is also pretty cold. And we are almost at uh, 100K, Anna, that's, that's correct. Okay, um, what I wanted to do, and maybe this is interesting, we could do a little bit of a walkthrough um, of, of, our, of our, our last few well, it's been five years since I started this channel, right? So in, I think the first videos were in January 2015. And maybe I can ex explain a little bit of the story and then you can look into the videos on how they actually have developed over the years. I, I hope they developed over the years to the positive. Um, 
So in 2014, end of 2014, I was doing freelance work as um, a, a, mainly as somebody who does Google Analytics for people. And in 2014, this was still a pretty hard thing to do for small businesses. Why? Because oftentimes they had Google Analytics installed, but when you really wanted to consult for them and help them out with their analytics and look into the numbers and what they mean, you oftentimes found out the numbers are not right. The, the tracking is just not set up correctly. Then this tool came out, Google Tag Manager, and I started playing around with it in 2013, 2014 and was really enamored by, wow, you can now go in, if there's some, somebody has this installed, you can now go in and install this tracking yourself. And this obviously solved a huge problem in how I perceived then my work and how I could help out my clients because I could tell them, hey, I will not help you only to read the numbers, I will also help you to install the right numbers because when, once we, once we look into your implementation, we often find that these are the things that are not installed. So how can we install them? So then I slowly made the switch from manual installations by basically writing developer specifications and telling them to change around the GA tracking code in this and that manner in order to track this correctly to actually being able to do this myself. So only getting one tracking code sent over and then being able to control this from my side. And this obviously, especially for the smaller clients, help them out tremendously. Bigger clients are a different um, kind of game because when you have a big client, they oftentimes have a developer team. They oftentimes maybe have marketers sitting there. Um, they have a different need of it and you can, they have a different implementation speed, especially if you wanted to get tracking installed. If you have a developer on, on staff, obviously they can do it fast. So when Google Tag Manager came out, I started trying to figure it out. I don't know if you, under, uh, if you understood what we were going through back then, 2013, Google Tag Manager looked very different. I don't even know if I have very old videos about this, but we can take a look in a second. And I was trying to figure it out and it was really trial and error at that point. So if you have a trigger, how do you know that you need to do things in a certain given steps in order to put first the, the listener functionality in and then test the trigger out and then see the variables and then put the variables into the conditions of the filter options of the um, trigger itself in order for the tag to fire. So all of this was not documented at all. You had a little bit of documentation and obviously I think it was like a little product within Google in order to help them out, in order to push AdWords and um, AdWords or Google Ads, like it's today called, to get more tracking installed so people have more numbers available. But it was never intended to, um, to build out this, this perfect product right away. And so the Google Tag Manager team did a lot around this but at the same time, there were only developers probably in this team and not so many people who do technical documentation, who go on and, and talk about this stuff, who do little tutorial videos about it. Google is much better about this now for their, for their newer products. Uh, it always depends on, on how successful, I don't know what the internal metrics are for, for uh, Google Tag Manager. So at the beginning, we really had to figure a lot of stuff out. And I was working at this checking implementer. At some point, a friend came over to me and I was living at that time in Vietnam because I wanted to live the digital nomad lifestyle. So I was living in Vietnam and a friend of mine who is a consultant and helps out course creators, he asked me, hey, Julian, there's something new going on out there. It's called Udemy and people are making good money with it. It's like, go Udemy, okay, I, I will look at it. And I thought, I could try it out. I have a little bit of, of time on my hands. I will just produce a course and put it on Udemy. This course actually took, um, well, well, was in the end eight hours long. It was so long 
that I had l every little detail in there that I, from my knowledge that I could put in there, that people found it overwhelming when they went through, I guess. And um, yeah, and then it stood there. It was just on Udemy. I made, I made a little bit of uh, a couple of hundred dollars, I think, the first month. So it was okay for me as a freelance income. And I was living um, in, not in uh, Europe like right now, so I didn't have to make so much money. But I realized then maybe I should do a little bit of marketing. And then I started um, thinking about like, hey, um, I do this video course or I sell this video course. Maybe I should show how I teach on video and maybe I should do this on YouTube. That was just a natural thing for me. At the same time, I'm not a big um, writer, I would say. I don't particularly ri like writing. I can do it, but I don't particularly enjoy it. And therefore I thought maybe I do this tutorial thing. And I looked into how could I record my screen? How could I uh, listen, uh, set up a microphone and so on. By the way, you might, if you have been following me for, for a long, long time, you might have known before Measure School or before this whole um, YouTube channel, I had a little podcast. So I had a mic and I interviewed, for example, Seymour Hava in 2000. Um, 14 or something or 15. I need to look that up as well. Anyways, and then I started a YouTube channel and for me it was just very clear I want to be very niche because I sell this Google Tag Manager course. Um, let's call this GTM Training. So I registered a domain GTM Training and this is what how the YouTube channel actually started. Okay, um, I would say if you are up for it let me just look. Oh, we have uh, two subscribers more, so we had 19. So if you have 19 friends, maybe you could call them right now and you will see this number tick up. That uh, would be great. Let me look into the chat again, see who is here. As well, um, we have um, Bill um, asking the question, do you have any videos on users of JavaScript and how we can use it with, it, with GA or GTM? Uh, we have that within our Measure Masters membership. I have a whole course on Google Tag Man uh, JavaScript for Google Tag Manager, if you want to check that out. Um, JavaScript within Google Analytics is actually something, within Google Analytics you cannot program. Um, but with, with Google Tag Manager, you would be able to utilize this um, for your tracking deployment, definitely with custom HTML and so on. So I hope that answers that question. Let me see. Michael asks, uh, what, is, what do you think is the future of GTM? So GTM is, um, <laughs> what's the future? In the end, there, there are different discussions going on. You might know GDPR, um, that is one separate discussion. Then we have um, the scrutiny of the browser vendors like Safari for getting rid of cookies and tracking codes in that making it more privacy concerned. And on the other hand, we have um, a big industry, the digital marketing industry, really relying still on cookies. There will be a transition out of this. What is the alternative? It's server-side tracking, but server-side tracking doesn't solve all our problems, especially with uh, retargeting and building cookie pools, for example, and, and, and targeting people correctly. But Google Tag Manager is working on a new um, version which will include server-side tracking. I can't say much more to it because I don't have access to it. I, I don't know what it would look like, but th that is the word out there that there's something being worked on. I hope I didn't say too much. Um, <laughs> no, I, I, I don't think so. Um, so uh, server-side tracking is something that is going to come to Google Tag Manager. And yeah, we will see how Google Tag Manager will develop in the future if it's still the thing between marketing and the IT department, um, if it's still accessible to smaller clients as well. Because when it comes to server-side tracking, that's probably not something that marketers can do themselves, but just one or two clicks. Who knows, maybe there will be plugins for it. We will see. Um, I. Um, I think that the Google Tag Manager over the last few years, over the last few months, made a lot of um, the big announcement last year, at least were the tag templates, the custom tag templates. And this is a clear 
or bigger push towards um, to the, towards the enterprise, making it more enterprise safe for people to use. So that's obviously also something that I want to get in. We'll see. Um, any more predictions? Not really. But these are the challenges, obviously, that our industry faces with um, cookies and so on. Okay, and then um, Mohammed says more videos for app flatter tracking. So you might have seen that I don't really do any kind of tracking for um, for for mobile apps. Flutter is as well something that you probably track server side rather than um, client side. Uh, it's really hard to for me to show something that is not very standardized. The thing is, when I do tutorials, and these tutorials take a lot of time to prepare, I always need to think about the people who are watching them. And with a WordPress website, I can very well predict what they need to click on. They need to log in and they need to install this plugin. And then you have this data there and then you pull this data out. With um, mobile apps, for example, there is no one framework where they just have to click a, a couple of buttons. You are obviously, when you build a mobile app, oftentimes you have a developer and then you need to talk to the developer. There's, there's no way around this. To explain this a little bit. Um, Xray says, uh, thank you. Uh, the channel helped me learn GTM and Google Data Studio. That's great. Um, Pete says, uh, do you have a more in-depth training on Data Studio? Yes, just check out our website. Um, Wallet says, hello from Tunisia. Hello to you too, Wallet. Um, Alvrock says, congrats, Julian. You well deserved. Your tutorials are lifesaver for many marketers and developers starting fresh with measurement tools. Kudos. Thank you very much. I actually don't know yet if we are at a 100,000. No, we lost subscribers again. Guys, this is not how it works. <laughs> we uh, need to get now again 21. We had 18 before. Who's unsubscribed here? All right, um, maybe we can get there. Otherwise, we'll need to do this um, some other time or <laughs> maybe we'll have this in a few hours. Or if you are really sneaky, you could just uh, register another uh, Google account or probably you have a lot of Google accounts and just go over there and yeah, do it. Then we can all celebrate in this live stream. Okay, what I want to do right now before we move on is to go over the... Um, let me see if I can create a new scene here and do a little screen share. Okay, right now you don't see anything, but let me just configure my screen. I need to do this on the fly, unfortunately, because I didn't... Ah, I wonder if this even works. Let me see. No, nope, this is the wrong one. This one is the right one. So I hope you can see my screen here. I will just uh, resize this. Transform, get the screen. I hope you can see my screen and you can hear it too. Um, I'm just gonna go to the channel here and let's take a look at my videos from a long time ago. So um, maybe we'll start with the oldest videos. So here we still had the videos when I started out doing this channel. And this was really about just looking at how I could promote a little bit of my course. So at the beginning, don't know if you can hear this, this was basically the intro. And I was just telling people, hey, they should buy my Udemy course, which was this one. And then I went through and explained macros. Who knows what macros are? I don't know. Um, I don't even know why I still have this video up here. Macros were renamed in two years later into variables. So 
you still find really great content from other people out there about macros, but they were just renamed. And this is what, oh yeah, this is the first version of Google. Um, I think it's the first version or the second version of, of Google Tag Manager right here. So the funny thing is if we, so much more, much ve uh, very different from, this, the demo shop didn't change too much, but uh, very different from what we had before. Preview and debug mode also didn't change that much. Ah yeah, here, here I think in this video, I explain a little bit about how you do um, event tracking. And in event tracking was actually pretty hard before because you had to um, deploy two tags in order to do uh, auto event tracking. You need to do, you need to deploy a listener tag and then also your, your trigger and then Trigger, what triggers not, yeah, triggers were also renamed from rules into triggers. So a lot UI wise has changed over the years, as you can see. As you can see, this was really just every week I would just put out a new video right here and I would just have just changed the text around. This was basically the whole thing. Okay, there were, f then at some point I was like, okay, maybe I could just turn on my webcam and show my face, right? I don't know if it happens here already. Oh, here I bought a, um, a little intro for gtmtraining.com, which I created, uh, which we created with a template. Here I don't yet show my face, I think, but I, I show my picture. <laughs> So this was already a big um, thing for us back then. So I don't know if you know Drip. Drip is a tool that was bought by Lead Pages. Oh wow! Okay. Um, have I changed over the years? So here you see a video that I've done for Drip, not for Drip. Um, I, they didn't know that I was doing this. But here was uh, probably one of the first videos of uh, the, the, the day with my webcam on. And I had this blue Yeti mic that I bought then. And what I, I think this, yeah, this must be in the room of my sister at home, uh, at my parents' home, when I visited them, um, probably in 2015, yeah. I visited them during the summertime and then I went back to Vietnam, I think, or to Thailand or somewhere else. Um, so this was the first video where I really showed my face. I don't know if anybody remembers those. Let's take a look at email input. Ah, yeah. This was also Vietnam, our apartment in Vietnam. Um, and there, Shortly after I went to Hong Kong, I think. Yeah, I, I visited Hong Kong and bought a camera. So the new videos here, I took it a little bit more seriously. I actually with a camera. So with a, uh, with, a, with a tripod and we had this little fancy animation. So I was trying to up the quality of like uh, how we do the videos and, and do a little bit more editing within the, the screencast itself and show how this is done. Yeah. Maybe at this point we can talk a little bit about my inspirations for this YouTube channel. Um, I, I watch a lot of YouTube channels as well and there are some that do really great screencasting tutorials. I'm, I was always a particular fan at that time of um, lynda.com which is now uh, bought by LinkedIn called LinkedIn Learning. And LinkedIn Learning um, yeah, showed me really nicely how we how we could up the quality in terms of like our video editing as well. And you see also the, the thumbnail change. Um, I, I followed the advice to put a person on the thumbnail because it was always me and maybe I should do this more often. And then, yeah, we actually changed over from GTM training to measure school. Here I bought a better camera or a better better um, lens. 
to have the blurry background. And people started asking me about the guitars here in the background. There was also, um, suddenly I got, got a lot of comments like, Julian, you play the ukulele. What kind of ukulele do you play? And so on and so forth. Oh yeah, I play ukulele and um, maybe I should put this more in the background. But at that time, I really didn't have a dedicated studio. I had to open and close the, um, I had to um, rebuild my set basically all the time which was kind of uh, annoying. Okay, before we go on, let's go back here to my sub count. Wow, guys, you're great. Okay, 13, <laughs> 13 people left to um, subscribe to this channel and we'll hit 100,000 subscribers. Wouldn't that be great? Let's see uh, what the chat says here. Da, 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 da. Uh, how did you like this little tour? Um, we have Adam from Hungary here. Uh, welcome, Adam. We have uh, Pete from the Netherlands. I think I've read this already. Da, da, da. Why such a sparing use of community tab? You have one post for in four months. YouTube says posting more drives engagement. Yeah, you might have noticed that we haven't really posted in four months. Um, I made a video at the end of 2019 saying that I'm gonna go on a little bit of a vacation here in order to uh, restructure some things within the company. And that's why we haven't really posted much. Um, on the YouTube channel at all. But we are ramping up again and hopefully we'll bring up more videos in the near coming future. The community tab itself is kind of hard to um, get to. First of all, it's not very prominent within YouTube Studio. The other thing is that it's not connected. There's no API connection to the common tools that we use in order to send out our updates, for example, via Facebook or um, uh, Facebook, Twitter, and uh, LinkedIn. So if you follow me on any of these channels, uh, the messages that we send out there are basically the same. But for the community tab, even for this live stream, somebody has to log in and go to the community tab and, and post it. And we simply forgot it uh, yesterday. So I did it yesterday evening, which was not maybe not the best idea um, because it was pretty late. So I hope that answers that question. Um, Marco says, uh, Julian, thank you for everything you've taught me. My question, do you know JavaScript and how necessary is it for GTM? Well, I know JavaScript and I am not a JavaScript developer. Um, let's put it this way. I don't write JavaScript on a regular basis as a JavaScript developer would do, but I know it pretty well, so well that I can uh, be more advanced in Google Tag Manager. And if your if your goal is to become an advanced Google Tag Manager implementer, probably the top 10% of implementers, yes, you would probably need to know JavaScript. Why? Because Google Tag Manager is JavaScript. In the end, Google Tag Manager is just a very fancy JavaScript injector with a UI. And JavaScript is the underlying technology of how these scripts are deployed on your page. You might know that you cannot deploy PHP scripts um, through Google Tag Manager or anything else, right? Um, it's just that, yeah, all these tags, they depend on JavaScript. So um, that's a skill. Is it an essential skill? As a marketer, if you are more concentrated on trying to drive traffic to the website, you probably need to have very good skills in your marketing vendor platform, for example, Google Ads, right? Do you know? Do you need to know JavaScript in order to deploy all the tracking that you want? No. In that sense, you probably need to collaborate more. If you are the expert in PPC, you want to collaborate with your developer in order to make, um, to make your tracking deployment work. JavaScript itself can be super useful if you want to be more advanced. Again, if you want to debug correctly, if you want to know how a tracking code actually works, 
what the shortcomings are of many tracking techniques to come up with new ways to be more flexible with um, your tracking deployment and be more creative with it as well, then I would recommend to learn JavaScript. Yes. And um, one place to do this is Measure School. We have um, two courses within our membership where we have users who um, learn JavaScript for the first time. Um, I take people through that, but then also use JavaScript specifically for Google Tag Manager. And you just get a very clear understanding of how Google Tag Manager actually works. So if you sometimes ask yourself, hey, my trigger doesn't work. What is actually involved? What are the variables that make up a trigger, for example? And this, in the end, is just JavaScript. Beyond that, you can use JavaScript for so much more now. That's why I think it's so useful to learn JavaScript. You can do real programming with it nowadays. You can do backend programming through Node.js. You can write desktop applications with Electron. You can write mobile apps with um, React.js native. React JS native. Um, that's just one example. Um, you can, yeah, really get more in depth with all of these technologies. And I, for example, got more into it and loved it more and more. Um, I've written this uh, Google Chrome extension, right? The, the GTM copy paste extension, if you haven't checked that out yet. That is something that I wouldn't have done without my JavaScript skill. This was probably the biggest JavaScript project that I've ever take, taken on. And it's probably my, still, it's like a little bit of cowboy code, I must say. I'm not a developer, I, um, I must admit. Let me just go back, see what is our subscriber account. Okay, 12 people more. Come on, guys. And we have um, a few other things here. Um, G. Krish says he didn't get his refund yet. Uh, that is unfortunate. Uh, we can look into this for you if you let us know your name um, and your email address, um, but you would need to just send us an email, uh, then I will look into this for you. Uh, duh, duh, duh. Everybody gets their refund. Hello, Julian, any experience from PrestaShop? Any recommendations for best layer, data layer plugin uh, for PrestaShop? Mm, I have experience with PrestaShop. We used it on one of the projects um, a few years back before I started Measure School actually. So I know PrestaShop. I don't have a recommendation for a plugin. I, um, with plugins, the thing that I can only tell you is to try them out. The thing is, if you have a very customized store, then the plugin might not hook into the right places, depending on if you always did the updates, if you always kept your, your shop very standard, then maybe you will be able to use a plugin and it might work. The other thing is if you buy a pl paid plugin, then you have support with this plugin. And if you have support with this plugin, you can call the or um, converse with the developer of it. And if it doesn't work, I think the developer will be good enough to tell you, okay, I will give you a refund for this, right? So the only thing that I can tell you is try it out and maybe send me over an email, let me know which plugin you then um, recommend. Because I can't always test everything for you guys. Uh, I would love for other people to test more, to try out things more. Sometimes I find in the comments as well that people are just, just want to have the quick fix, but it would be so much easier to just tell them, hey, just do it this way as you think you should do it. Click on the preview mode and suddenly you can see the result if the tag fires or it doesn't fire. And then we can talk about the problem if it doesn't fire. But if you don't try it out and you just want to have the solution, it is infinitely harder to give you a solution. So again, with the plugins as well, what is the best plugin for Magento? I can give you my experience. Um, there, there are a lot of people using AnnoWave, um, but otherwise, uh, yeah, with PrestaShop, I just don't know. So I'd love to hear from you. Cool. Uh, da, 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 da. Mohammed asked, um, what tracking tool for Flatter app? So Flatter app um, is a Google product. So use a Google tool like uh, Google Analytics for app and web or use Firebase Analytics. Um, I think Flatter you want to write with a U, right? Flutter. Uh, maybe there's a Flatter out there. 
which I don't know. Ethan is here. Um, what kind of role machine learning will play in Google Tag Manager? In Google Machine Learning, in Google Tag Manager, Machine Learning, it, it's a good question. <laughs> so within Google Tag Manager, probably no role because you can't compute something inside uh, you need a machine for that. Uh, Google Tag Manager has no machine. It's a it's a JavaScript injector or a tag management tool, right? So there's there's no there's no machine in there. But if you think about analytics tools and a broader analytics um, scope, I could think of um, um, machine learning at some point. Uh, if if you have a standardized e-commerce store and you just need to track all the button clicks, maybe at some point um, a tool like Google. Uh, a tool that you install into Google Tag Manager might be able to figure out the, the, the trigger um, for you and you just say, I want to I wanna track this button. Maybe. But right now, I, I don't see how you could use um, machine learning skills within Google Tag Manager itself by, by doing tracking implementation. It would be more on the tool vendor side on that front. I hope that helps. Let's take a look at our subscriber count. We are at 89, so 11 more. Guys, you know what to do. I wanna continue here with our little tour of um, our time back into the old realm of the Measure School YouTube channel. So then we started using um, a bit more of my face on the implementation as well. Oh, and then I started my first, uh, uh, yeah. So this was the time I actually had 10,000 subscribers. So I was able to visit the YouTube space in Berlin. And this video was my first attempt at vlogging. Uh, <laughs> pretty shaky back then. Wow, I was young. And then we went to the YouTube space. Yeah, 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 yeah. But unfortunately, um, no, nobody really watched it. <laughs> so in the end, uh, we didn't uh, do much more vlogging after that. And I don't think I particularly enjoyed it because it's quite different from doing tutorial videos. Uh, let me see. For example, this video is a green screen video. We tried to do green screen for a while. Green screen is super hard to get right because you need to do the keying right and it kind of looks a little bit off and people uh, commented on that. So we never tried it really again. This video, I can tell a story about this video, um, was the first attempt to do some mobile tracking, right? So here I really logged in to uh, build a little demo app on Android. Man, that was that was a pain. Like I, I don't really know anything about Android development. And then I just followed some tutorials in order to get this Firebase analytics installed and uh, make this all work. Um, but this probably took me two or three weeks to, to get to that point where I could actually explain it and show the data later on. It was interesting experience, but um, that's when I stopped really doing any kind of mobile thing because it's just too hard to set up. Okay, these were mainly videos that we put from a course online. And then I had like my studio tour. This was at my, this was when I, I wasn't back in Germany permanently yet, but I had like this um, screen and this is, yeah, this is the old studio that I had with these lights. The lights I still have, the microphone I still have. Let me see, what else do I show? And this little teleprompter I still have as well. And the, the tripod. The, the camera has changed over the years. But yeah, that was the, the setup back then. Pretty messy. I should do a new studio too here in my apartment in Berlin. Let me know if you're interested in that. And then we had certain other videos that I tried out. So making interviews with, with other people. So here we had uh, Trevor on and this was great uh, to talk to Trevor. 
Um, also, the format was good, but yeah, it was kind of hard to to get this all together. And then I did a video, 10 things to master in Google Analytics. So if you want to be a Google Analytics Pro, you can um, check this, this video out. It was an interesting video because I just um, winged it, so to say, during the whole thing. And later it got retweeted by um, the Google Analytics team. And then suddenly I, I had like um, a lot of views on it. Uh, so it's at 180,000 now, which is quite big for our channel. Um, back then I was already in Berlin. So this is um, the time I, I got married and um, started uh, making my move back to Europe. So this is me back in Europe already but another apartment that I am in now. Okay, and then when I was back in Europe, did more tutorials. Then uh, Google Data Studio came out, obviously. That's also a big change. The Google Global Site Tag came out, gtag.js. A lot of people were quite um, confused about this. And then later, what do we else do we have here? Which which was interesting. Where is this? Okay, this was at my parents' place. Ah, I did this um, super, super cut video. So you might notice from Apple conferences where the new announcements are, and there are always these super cut videos. So I thought, hey, I, I will do a super cut video for um, the Google marketing event that just uh, was announced and um, cut it together in 10 minutes. And that was um, shared also pretty much uh, within the community because uh, people don't want to watch a 60 minute video. Okay. Some videos did well, some did uh, less well. Um, but I was always really into seeing how I could make the channel better and try out new things. I started doing also more like other, other tech um, related videos. So for example, Keyword Hero, or um, um, how to do thumbnail generation, um, how to write some app script and so on, but, or a Postman app, for example. But I must say that um, this just opened up the world to me, people writing me nowadays saying, hey, Julian, can you do an, uh, a product review for us? And yeah, my channel is not really about product reviews. So it really needs to change. Uh, we have got our first uh, guest contributors as well here uh, with Julius for the track element visibility. Um, this was an interesting one because Julius wrote a, a, a post about um, how to track the visibility of an element on the page. He prepared this whole video. I think it took like um, two or three weeks in order to get it all right. All, all, this was his first um, time he, he, he done any kind of screencasting. And then I, I think when we wanted to publish it, one day later or three days later, was it later? No, it was before that. So we wanted to publish on Wednesday and on Monday, Google Tag Manager announced, hey, we now have an element visibility trigger. <laughs> so afterwards I had to, to um, make another video explaining the element visibility trigger. And it was kind of sad that, yeah, he prepared this whole video and it was like obsolete, kind of obsolete. Um, the day we brought it out, but we still have it on the channel. So that was that. Uh, da, 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 da. Let me see. We started doing more live streams. Um, 50K subscriber one year ago. No. July 6, 2018, we had 50K subscribers. So we doubled within one and a half years. That's good. Almost two years, one and yeah, okay. Um, but then I also, and this was the biggest project that I've done on JavaScript uh, to date, 
it, it was the GTM copy paste extension. There's where I'm already in the apartment that I'm in now, and you can see the, the stuff in the background. We changed the studio a little bit over the years, but this was really the biggest JavaScript thing that I've created, and it took me months um, to do. <laughs> but it was fun. Okay, um, going to the modern age and time. Um, these are the videos that we done last year. We worked a lot more with Ahmad um, that you have seen on the channel who's doing a lot of data studio stuff for us. And um, we had also a video from Bountyos this time. So um, Kevin did a video for us here. But yeah, um, then at the end of 2019, I must say that I have been a little bit burned out. So let's go back here. Uh, okay, 12 more. Uh, we lost uh, one subscriber again. Um, I can say that last year was uh, kind of one of the transition year for me as well. Uh, you need to see that um, the topic Google Tag Manager itself hasn't been as interesting to me anymore. Um, it has become a more mature product in itself. At the same time, um, YouTube isn't very good at keeping my content, or well, I, I, I can't really update content on YouTube, right? I can't um, replace a video that is already uploaded. So make it newer, um, change around the screens and so on. And um, that's the big difference between a blog post and a YouTube video. And therefore um, I would need to just re-release the content again, just update it and make a new video out of it. But then I have to wait till it ranks again and so on. So. Yeah, this, this brought me into the situation where I would need to update a lot of videos, but I'm not really interested in like talking about button click tracking the hundredth time um, because I already talk about it a hundred times. There are a lot of videos out there. Um, at the same time, I, I found that um, our membership is developing forward uh, really greatly and I want to put more time and, and uh, give more time to the measure masters that are already inside of the community um, and develop something uh, with them together. So we took some time off at the end of the year um, from the YouTube channel. We now see that we could put more um, uh, effort in, but at the same time, it's like kind of um, a, a thing that yeah, um, will perform uh, well over the next few months. We probably will, will put more videos and um, and I love that that you guys are still watching and, and seeing these videos and I still got really good feedback from all of you out there, even though I haven't published in the last uh, four months really. So uh, I hope you stay with us and I hope you let people know to subscribe because <laughs> you're still at, oh, uh, we're now at 88. So guys, 12 people, everybody of you knows one friend that they have on Slack right now or on uh, Skype. And the only thing that you can do right now is just uh, shoot them a message and say, hey, we need one more subscriber. Can you just subscribe to your YouTube channel? Um, if you have a colleague, if you're working right now, um, because we are all logged in, if you're working from home, just send us over to a friend and let's get this subscriber account up so we can at least celebrate and I can stop this live stream because I'm pretty tired from talking. I've talked so much over the last few days on, on, on screen and I'm getting a little bit, um, yeah, uh, how you call this? Uh, in German, it's Heiser. I'm losing my voice. Let's put it this way. So guys, who has another subscriber for me? Let's go back in the chat and see what's up here. Guys are still watching. Sorry, this is pretty informal and feel free to jump in, go out at any time. Let's um, look at some more comments here. We have James Scott. Are you going to play, use a quick tune on the, are you play us probably? Um, are you going to play us a quick tune on the guitar? Um, the funny thing is this one is probably not, not in tune. Don't play much guitar anymore. Okay, that's it. <laughs> the, I don't want to turn this into a, a guitar channel. So I hope this satisfies your 
curiosity there. Um, congrats to 100k. Well, we are not there yet, Maxim. You need to subscribe. Um, Andreas says, thank you, Julian, for your answers and a great channel. Thank you, Andreas. Sunil says, hello, Julian. You are one of the best GTM teachers in the world. Thank you. I learned a lot from you and earned lots of money. Uh, thanks, thanks for the support. Great that you earned a lot of, lots of money. You can also give us some <laughs> by, <laughs> by subscribing to our paid products. Anyways, this is just a side note. You can also just watch our um, advertising or click on the advertising and buy something from the advertiser. So if he puts more advertising onto our channel, could also be um, a model for us. Uh, Mohammed says, uh, thanks for helpful tutorials. Francesco says, uh, will you make a video on data analysis as well? Well, data analysis is kind of hard to do. There are different techniques out there, but uh, data analysis is something that is very individual, right? So when you look at um, a e-commerce store, you analyze it differently and you ask different questions than analyzing a game, let's say an online game, that is tracking via Google Analytics or a attorney's website and different things that you would analyze. The other thing is like, how can you transfer this? Um, in the end, I always try to teach people the principles of analysis of, of good data techniques, which is mainly asking the right question, looking if you can have tracking the data accordingly and then looking into it and segmenting so you get to that bit of insight. But this also might be a trial and error thing. You're tracking the wrong data and then you don't get any insights. So it's really hard to teach analysis in that front. Um, you can look, you need to have a case in front of you that you look at and you would be able to figure out with the audience, for example, and see what questions you can ask them. Um, Macalytics is here as well. So I don't, I don't know if it's uh, Hussein, but uh, congrats to you. And he says, uh, thank you very much. I don't know yet. If you haven't uh, subscribed yet, Hussein, then you need to um, do that now because we are still at, yeah, I should, let me just um, add this here. Maybe I can just add this little window, this little scene to our chat. Yes, we can add it, but it's huge. Five people more, guys. Uh, some some people have uh, <laughs> listened to me and uh, said their friends uh, to to um, subscribe, so thanks for that. Um, five people more and we are good to go. I don't have, really have any sound effects here. I should, I should put something in and then uh, we, we have something to look at. Da, 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 da. Deja says, I think I will give you subscriber in next 10 minutes. Thank you. Uh, please don't buy them. <laughs> this is... Uh, this is also, I, I met a guy at a conference last year and he's like, yeah, basically I, I sell, I, I'm one of these websites that like buy these subscribers or if you want to have more likes. So it's a really big industry around it and, and brands um, do this. So um, yeah, you can do this as well. Uh, Kieran says, congratulations, sir. Not yet. Uh, we have Ankita here. Um, what are the best tricks to get revenue from smart shopping campaign? There's no tricks. That's all explained uh, within the videos. You need to install a data layer and uh, uh, grab the, the revenue from there. Um, so, and then transfer it over to Google ads, obviously. So there's, there's no, there's, this is simple conversion tracking, I would say. So if you want to get the revenue of the smart shopping campaign, not really sh smart shopping, you can get the revenue from any campaign within Google ads, you need to install conversion tracking and in this conversion tracking tag, you need to put in the revenue in order to transfer it over. Four more people, I'm getting excited here. <sighs> okay. 
Any other questions? Anything that you that my, I, I might be able to rant about for the next three subscribers? Guys. Alinox says getting one. Thank you very much. I mean, I don't, I don't want to beg, <laughs> but we are on this live stream and we find that um, we two more, two more. <laughs> we find that we um, be on here as well. Maybe I can even look up in my YouTube thing. Yes, it added one to the counter. The counter is a bit, uh, so we are here um, a bit uh, like 30 seconds delay. Um, so, so yeah, you can ask your friend, your mom um, to, to subscribe. That would be great. Manjit is here. Hi Manjit. Good to see you. You are, you are um, experience a historic moment. People will talk about this moment years to come. Not really. Got another one. Okay, this is a screenshot that you can take, right? Nine, 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 nine. Guys, this is the moment. And we are here, 100,000 subscribers, even 101,000 subscribers. I didn't see it because I'm looking at the live stream and <laughs> This is not there yet. So we have reached 100,000 subscribers. Thank you so much, guys. Uh, thank you for your support for watching these videos. And I'm super happy that we have made it to 100,000 subscribers finally on this channel. Um, thank you for your continued support. And I hope you uh, keep watching this channel. And uh, I don't foresee how we will stop this anytime soon. Just let me know if you have any suggestions of what we could do better. Um, if you are a, are a marketing professional out there and you think, hey, Julian, I can teach this stuff as well, then uh, let me know and we can bring you on here as well. So thank you so much, guys, for um, helping me out here uh, in these last <laughs> moments. It's been, I, I actually didn't know when we started this live stream, it's like, are we actually gaining 40 subscribers in the next uh, hour or so? So we've been online for about an hour now. So this is good. Cool. Um, Alinux says, yeah. Uh, Jack says, great man. John Johnson says, well done. Excellent news. Well deserved. Thank you. We have uh, Giacomo, great. Um, Dimitri, congrats, Julian. Thank you. Um, Francesco doing the... <laughs> The, the little thing. Uh, thanks for the videos. Learned a lot. Thank you, Alinox. Thank you for being here online. Um, Alinox says, I don't watch other videos for GTM. I think you dish it out uh, the best out of there. Thank you very much. There are others out there. I also learn from others out there. So it's not like um, this is not a community effort as well. I can only thank other people. If I, if I would thank people that I used as sources over the years, I must obviously um, mention the name Simo Ahava. He's, uh, I met him multiple times and he has been a great inspiration, but also I learned a lot from his blog. The guys over at Lunar Metrics who are now uh, bounteous. Um, at the beginning, I read their blog uh, religiously. I also must say that there have been people who have been on the journey of teaching other people GTM, but they have dropped out over the years. So um, there's not much more content coming out, but um, I really love um, that this is still vibrant and, and uh, people still publish stuff. So um, yeah, uh, uh, this is a, this is not just me coming up <laughs> with Google Tag Manager, obviously. The Google Tag Manager team, thank you for uh, making this great pub, uh, product and developing it forward, as well as the whole uh, marketing cloud within Google, Google Analytics, Google Data Studio, and um, the other tools that are out there. Um, this is something that we uh, live off, kind of, <laughs> as well. Okay, guys, um, this has been a long live stream and I'm slowly losing my voice, unfortunately, talking into a camera where there's nobody. <laughs> but it's been a really great five years now and it's really crazy. I have never had a job that long, that, that I was doing that long, um, like five years. So 
Thanks for sticking with me. I hope I can stick with you um, more, longer for the next five years. And maybe then we are. And I'll see you next time at the one million uh, subscriber mark. It's also kind of interesting. Like I, 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 I was thinking like, should we actually celebrate this, right? This is 100,000 subscribers. For our niche and for the videos that you guys watch, this is huge. Like I don't know many um, marketing channels that, that have reached that level. Um, and not on a professional level. So if you look at Moz.com, obviously they have been doing it for a long time. Or the Google Analytics uh, YouTube channel, is, I think there are 300,000 subscribers or so. But obviously this is tiny, this is really tiny compared to PewDiePie or T-Series or um, yeah, uh, uh, tiny against them. I mean, the 10 million subscriber channel is tiny against them as well. Um, so it's interesting to see if there are more um, subscriber channels now. Oh yeah, the thing that I, I noticed, um, the Google, I will probably get an email from Google saying that I will get my subscriber plaque, my, my bronze, what will it be? It will be a silver play button. We call it silver play button. And then maybe I can hang this here, um, something like this. And um, uh, you guys made this possible. I don't know how they, how they're gonna send it to me. Do they have my address? Google knows everything, so probably yes. Um, let me see some comments here. Deraj, Deraj probably. You skipped my name because it's not easy for you to pronounce. I'm Sunny. Okay, Sunny. Hey, Sunny. Uh, congrats from my side. I learned a lot from you. Thank you. Thank you very much, um, Sunny. Oh yeah, and, and he wrote earlier, uh, 10 people subscribe from my side. Um, love the info that you provide. Thank you very much. Uh, for some reason, YouTube blocked your comment. I don't know why, I, I just unblocked it. Ah, <sighs> okay. So thanks for sticking with me. Um, even at the beginning, uh, this, this, this has gone live and then um, YouTube took down the video <laughs> because uh, I played some music, which I own. So I need to um, mess that and then see how I can do this. Alinux says, it's different here. It's about more serious readers who want to take things to the next level. And there's not much new stuff to publish. So 100K is awesome. Yes, uh, thank you very much, and that is well true. Hey Vlad, haven't seen you in a while. Uh, thanks for the congratulations, yes. Cool. Okay, this feels good. Um, this feels good, and it feels also as something that I can now go into the weekend. And even though there's a lot of bad news out there, guys, um, we should remain positive, so a little milestone within our community, at least for me. <laughs> and I hope um, this propels us forward to do other new cool stuff for you out there. Marco says, Ramelswa, Asimo Hava, Julius and Julian are golden triangle in this industry. Thank you very much to put me in that triangle. Cool guys. So for now, I will um, hop off here. It was fun uh, hanging out and doing a little bit of a recap here. I hope we um, can do this more often, <laughs> but this milestone won't be reached more often, maybe in a few, um, a few years we will celebrate the 1 million subscriber mark. Who knows? I mean, this also depends on the growth of YouTube and the growth of the channel as well, uh, and we see um, that other channels have suddenly subscribed and uh, have grown much bigger. Maybe, and, and you need to think about this as well, um, even though I can imagine that we would just continue doing YouTube videos in the manner that we do it with, with our tutorials, it's maybe also something we want to look at from a perspective of um, changing the channel around, making a new topic out of it, um, going into the future, um, this obviously depends on me as well. Um, I will not start making a makeup channel <laughs> um, because yeah, this, this face needs no makeup, but it's actually um, something that uh, we probably need to do in order to, to um, keep
keep it interesting for everybody out there. Um, if you think of why PewDiePie is so successful, or he's the most successful single YouTuber on the platform, he has reinvented himself multiple times on the platform. At the beginning, so doing uh, gaming videos, and then he did more vlogs and more comedy things, and now, yeah, he just started publishing again. But anyways, it's a big inspiration for all of us just to see how he uh, changed things around. You can think of him what you want. I, I don't I don't personally watch his channel much, but um, it's interesting to see that if you really want to make things work here, you need to experiment, you need to do new things. And this is always really hard because you guys expect something as well. Um, we are the, the YouTube channel that teaches you GTM, um, but maybe we will be the YouTube channel that teaches you at some point, I don't know, HTML or so, right? Um, or uh, uh, some other tools. So that's something, um, that is always something we need to wrap our heads around and uh, maybe we'll continue going in a, a direction with this. I don't know which direction yet. Anyways, for now, <laughs> um, thanks for, for tuning in. Um, you guys uh, have been great uh, during this live stream. Thank you again for making us uh, uh, a 100K subscriber channel, which we are now, are, which we now are. And um, please uh, stay subscribed. <laughs> Hopefully, we'll not lose subscribers again. <laughs> okay, we have now um, 100,011 or yeah, 100,011. So it's not gonna, <laughs> hopefully not gonna crash on us and we go back down. Um, and uh, yeah, if, if you guys can keep watching, keep commenting, I know it, with a larger audience, it gets, it gets also harder to answer all the comments out there. Um, but I hope uh, everybody stay, stays with us and um, we can develop something into the future. If you have any suggestions, I'm always open to hear them as well. For now, I thank you very much for your participation. And I hope to see you back again here on this channel for our next video, which will come out next week. I'm thinking about doing a live recording, so look out for that. For now, as always, my name is Julian. Till next time.